So when it comes to this B21 Raider, people have asked, why is it smaller than the B2? It's newer, shouldn't it be bigger? Well, think about it. What's easier to hide, a drone that's the size of a basketball or a drone that's the size of a hornet? The insect, not the jet. All that and more coming up, so stay at the very end of this video. What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Ryan, I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and commercial pilot. Today we're gonna to be breaking down the B-21 Raider. You can hit me up on Instagram, give me ideas for subjects you want me to cover. This one's gonna be fun. This is the newest aircraft and it's a sixth generation bomber. It's gonna be awesome to dive into it and say at the very end of this video. We're done when I say we're done. because I'm gonna give you some details about this thing that you probably haven't heard yet. Before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button, maybe even subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. It would help me grow this channel a ton. Thanks for being here. Let's dive in. So right off the bat, why is this bad boy called the Raider? Well, Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle was the leader of a raid on the Japanese homeland during World War II after Pearl Harbor. And essentially it showed the US resolve and it made Japan recall forces from the frontline combat forces to come back and protect the homeland. And it essentially created a turn in the tide for World War II. And then the 21 part comes as a nod to the fact that this is the first bomber of the 21st century. Personally, I think it's super cool. B-21 Raider, solid name. And to those of you in Las Vegas with the Raiders, It's not just because of you this thing is named the Raider. Okay, now you know. So why does the United States need a new bomber, right? You're probably saying to yourself, well, we've got the B-52, the B-1, the B-2. Is the bomber community just greedy? Do they just want another aircraft because it looks cool? No, not exactly. Ultimately, this is about sustainment and economy of force. So when it comes to a military and operating a force that can fight effectively, it comes down to having something that meets the budget because economy of warfare is important. So if you're spending trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars and someone else is spending far less for the same result, the end of the day, in the long run, you're not gonna come out on the top. What are you talking about? This money is our ticket to the good life, starting now. So this is a realignment of the bomber force that the US Air Force is doing. I think it's incredibly smart because what they're doing is they're getting rid of the B-1. There's already B-1s being sent to the Boneyard. They're also gonna get rid of the B-2. I mean, it's been said that there's more power in an iPhone these days than in an entire B-2. I mean, let that sink in. That thing is old, it needs to be replaced. So by replacing those two bombers, the Air Force can then focus on the B-52 and then the B-21. And it's just like wild to me that the B-52 is still staying around. I did an air show in Barksdale Air Force Base and I remember watching some of the B-52s take off up close. I mean, first of all, these things don't even have ailerons. They have like something else, something else arons, I think is exactly what they're called. But the big engines on those things belch out black smoke and that's the telltale sign of an engine that's not combusting fuel properly. And it's just honestly old technology. So it's interesting that those things are gonna keep flying. But the reason why they're gonna keep flying is because they're modernizing the engines. They're putting radars in these things. They're doing all kinds of incredible things to keep the B-52 strong. But the downside from some buddies I have that fly these things is that apparently you have to wear a fighter pilot style helmet and a uh, little catch, your missions are 10 plus hours. So. I don't know, if I was flying a heavy aircraft, I'd definitely want one that had a coffee maker and scones at the ready, so I wouldn't want to wear that fighter pilot helmet. <laughs> so what the Air Force is gonna do is they're gonna make the B-52 the standoff bomber. It's gonna be equipped with air launch cruise missiles. These things are wild. They've got thousand pound warheads on them and they're able to launch from distances that keep them safe from threats. So the B-52 is kind of perfect for that. It's just like a big work truck. It can carry a ton of stuff, but it's not really nimble and stealthy, obviously like, like the B-21, which is why the B-21 is gonna be the stand-in bomber. In other words, it's gonna be right over top of the target. Like, hey bro, told you not to mess with me. Shouldn't have done that. I'm right here looking at you. And now you gotta pay the price. So the B-21 is gonna be able to get right in there in the thick of things due to its stealth characteristics. Now guys, let's hit on some facts straight from Northrop about the B-21. So it's a nuclear capable penetrating strike stealth bomber. So it can do both. 
jack of all trades. The command that will be running this bad boy is Air Force Global Strike Command and the first base will be Ellsworth Air Force Base, South Dakota. That will also be where the training will take place. The cost of this bad boy is coming in at a cool $700 million and that's in 2022 dollars. Which may sound like a lot unless you're Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, but it, it actually includes all the different delivery costs, training costs, simulators, engineering that will have to happen and take place throughout the lifespan of the B-21. So it sounds like a ton, but the B-2 in comparison costs $2 billion a copy. Whew. It's a lot of cash. Northrop Grumman built this bad boy and it's got some pretty impressive characteristics that they have included in the package. The biggest thing that I wanna take away from this whole video is that it's a sixth generation aircraft. Ryan, what does that mean, sixth generation? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Essentially, it's an upgraded stealth capability and obviously the details of that haven't been released. I mean, keeping this information close hold is super important, but when it comes down to it, they essentially use new materials is what they say to make it even more stealthy. In my opinion, I think they got Tony Stark to build an Iron Man suit around this aircraft. This thing can also actually fly without pilots. So with that, you get the ability to fly at super high altitudes where life support equipment isn't needed anymore. So you can put other stuff in it, like extra munitions. You can also do things like fly massively long flights. So whereas the human body, you know, maybe could stretch to like a 24 hour flight. That'd be a brutal one. They'd have to literally turn this thing upside down and pour you out of the cockpit after 24 hours. But if you wanted to stay airborne for even longer, it's gonna be able to do that due to the fact that it is an unmanned platform as well. And its ability to integrate and operate with other aircraft is gonna be second to none from what I can tell. Essentially the F-35 is the most advanced sensor platform that the United States military has. I mean, that thing is just super capable in combat. So think of that on steroids. The fact that they've been able to take the F-22, the F-35, and then improve upon that as far as how it integrates the different sensors that it has and its ability to have situational awareness. SA is what we call it in the fighter pilot world. Just look out on the battlefield and see all that. And the big thing is it's a digital bomber. So everything in this was purpose built to be user friendly, as user friendly as you possibly could be. And when you see modern aircraft, that's the whole goal is to give you situational awareness and give you time back from actually flying the plane to where you can operate the sensor. So if you make it a digital aircraft, now you've got an aircraft that's relatively easy to fly. We'll see, I mean, I don't know, looking out of that windscreen, it's definitely gonna be a challenge at times to land, I'm sure, but ultimately this thing's gonna be a digital platform which makes it easy to operate the aircraft and the weapon systems. And then this thing uses a digital cloud infrastructure to store its own information. Pretty sure it's gonna build its own secret lair and one day it's gonna turn into Dr. Evil. <laughs> Hopefully not, <laughs> but it's essentially got the ability to store information up in a cloud and then use that information to operate more effectively. I mean, just a small example of that is modern day airliner engines will send information via satellite to maintenance crews to help with the maintenance that will happen once an airliner lands. So think of that, but with weapon systems and different information that's being provided from the battle space, I mean, this thing's gonna be super capable. And then one of the best features as I look at this thing is the fact that the maintenance on it has been thought about. It's purpose built to have less maintenance costs than previous generation bombers. I mean, if you look at the F-117, it's a stealth fighter, but also did bombing as well. You had to actually cut open the skin to do maintenance on this thing. So they've learned their lesson. They're like, look, we wanna reduce maintenance costs. We don't want that headache. And we're gonna purpose build ease of maintenance into the B-21, which is a huge advantage. And then the next thing is global reach. So the ability for this thing to reach out and touch any target on the surface of the earth at any given time with or without pilots. It can do electronic attack. It can gather surveillance and reconnaissance. It's got all the different nations that might be hostile to the US shaken a little bit, which is exactly what it's built to do. It's built to create deterrence so that hopefully we can avoid conflict. But you can bet that if something kicks off in the world, the president of the United States, one of the first things they're gonna say to the chief of staff of the Air Force is, hey, 
Where my B21's at? And then you made it to the end of the video, guys. So some bonus information on the design characteristics of this thing. I'm a huge fan of design and operability, so it should interact well with the pilots or the pilots that happen to be on the ground flying this thing via satellite. It should also be purpose-built design-wise. So the fact that the windshield looks kind of interesting as we're taking a peek at this thing, it almost looks a bit like a Stingray. I'm pretty sure Stingrays around the world are gonna file a copyright violation for the B-21. But why is it like that? Why is it built like that? Well, when I think of it, here's just my personal opinion. It's just my two cents. When you look at a Stingray, it's built to be slippery. It's built to slip through the water and have water flow over it in a way that it's most efficient. So when I think about a stealth bomber, I think about radar waves. I want those waves to flow across and slip across this aircraft in the most efficient way possible so that it can be undetected. So that's why I think it looks like a Stingray. And when it comes to the size of it, I gave the drone example earlier, like what's easier to see, what's easier to detect, a larger drone or a smaller drone. So when you think about the fact that this thing is smaller than the B-2, Anything that's smaller is going to have less of a radar signature just right off the bat. And then you can perfect things. You can operate in the margins, change the different materials and things like that to make it more stealthy. So ultimately, I think this is a sweet machine. Everything we've talked about, just show me that it's a purpose-built aircraft. It's sixth generation. It's got the bells, it's got the whistles, and it's got the efficiency. All things that to me as a pilot sound great. So Northrop, if you need an extra test pilot, you know who to ask. Thanks so much for being here, guys. If you wanna say hello or give me other ideas for videos, hit me up on Instagram. Would love to chat with you there. Before you get going, if you would, just dominate that like button. Maybe even subscribe. See you in the next video. Most of all, have a great day.